Hey everyone, Teacher Chang here today, and we're going to talk about perimeter and area of a polygon in a coordinate plane. So we're going to go ahead and start off with a simple one. We're going to start off with a triangle, and we're going to take a look at the perimeter. Now remember, a perimeter just means to go ahead and add up all of the sides. So what we want to do is figure out, well, what is the length of each of our sides here? And then we could add them up together. Now to do that, we're going to go ahead and take a look at side AB first. Now... A, B, I need to go ahead and figure out what is that length. I can do that in one of two ways. Well, one, I'm going to go ahead and use the distance formula. So that's one possibility. So I'm going to go ahead and use the distance formula, which means I need to know what is the ordered pair of point A, which is at negative 5, negative 3, and what is the ordered pair of point B, which is at 3, 3. Now, I also need the distance formula if I'm going to use that method. And that distance formula, in case you forgot, is d is equal to the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. Now, that x1 and x2 and y1 and y2, well, that just means our first and our second point. So our first point is a, so that's going to be my 1, so x1 and y1. And my second point will be my b, so that's my x2 and y2. And all we got to do is just substitute everything into our formula. So I'm going to go ahead and recopy this formula here, and I'm going to put in my parentheses, my minus signs, and my square, and we're going to go ahead and put that plus sign in between. And now all we got to do is substitute everything that we have here. So I'm going to start off with my x2 minus x1. So x2 is 3 in this case, minus x1, which is negative 5. So minus a negative means plus, so plus 5. Now I'm going to do the same thing for my y's. y2 is 3, minus y1, which is negative 3. So that means plus 3. And then we just need to do the math. So if I go ahead and do the math here, we got 3 plus 5, which is 8. And 8 squared is 64. And then the next one, we got 3 plus 3, which is uh, 6. And 6 squared is 36. So now I got 64 plus 36 inside that square root sign. Well, 64 plus 36 is 100. And the square root of 100 is 10. So we now know the length of AB. Now, I told you there's more than one way to go ahead and find the, the distance of a line on a coordinate plane. And so I'm going to go ahead and do a different method by finding out the length of side BC. So now our, our next goal is to find out, well, what is the length of side BC? And I, I could do the same. I could go ahead and write out the ordered pairs of point B and point C. But in this case, I want to show you a different method. And that method is called the Pythagorean Theorem. Now, a lot of us already know what the Pythagorean Theorem is, and we know that it only works for right triangles. Well, in this particular case, some of you guys might be looking at this triangle and say, that's not a right triangle. Well, what we can do is we can create a right triangle. And we're going to create a right triangle by drawing horizontal and vertical lines and letting BC, the side that I'm looking for, being one of the sides of my triangle. So here, I'm drawing this horizontal and this vertical line, and we could see right over here that we have BC. If I go ahead and draw a line at BC, here we got a right triangle now. So with this right triangle, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and find out, well, what is the length of side BC? Well, remember, Pythagorean theorem is A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And C is always going to be our hypotenuse. So in this particular case, side C is going to be that side that we're looking for. Now, the other two sides is our A and our B. And it doesn't matter which one's which. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this side be our, our A, which is 2. And then I'm going to let the other side, which is uh, going to be our B, and that's going to be 6. So all we got to do is plug all of that into our information here. So since a is 2, that means 2 squared plus b, which is 6. So 6 squared is equal to c squared. Well, that's not too bad. 2 squared is just 4. 6 squared is 36. That's all equal to c squared. And 4 plus 36 is just 40. Okay. Well, I still need to get 
that c by itself. So I got to square root both sides here. And that way the c uh, is going to be by itself. So c is equal to the square root of 40, which we'll write in decimal form. So that way we can add that. That's going to be 6.32-ish. So that length is about 6.32. All right, we need to do one more side here, and this side is actually a lot easier because if we take a look at this side, well, it's a horizontal line. So this last side right over here, AC, well, AC is just a horizontal line, and that means we could just count how many units across that is, and that's about 10 units, it looks like. So it looks like, yeah, it's 10 units across. So now that we know that side AC is 10 units across. And now that we have all of our sides, well, we could just add everything up together and that's gonna give us our perimeter. So I'm gonna go ahead and add AB plus BC plus AC. And if we add those together, that totals out to be 26.32 units. So that's the perimeter, and that's how you calculate the perimeter of all of our polygons. You could either use the distance formula or you could use the Pythagorean theorem. Uh, either method will work. Now let's go ahead and take the same triangle and let's go ahead and calculate the area of this triangle. Now remember, area of a triangle. What is the formula of the area of a triangle? Well, area of a triangle is base times height divided by 2. So all I got to do is to figure out, well, what is the length of our base and what is the length of our height? And then we just substitute it into our formula. Now, remember that the base and the height must form a right, tri a right angle. So the base and height will always form a right angle. So it must form a right angle angle. So that's what we're going to do here. So I'm going to go ahead and take a look at my base. And my base is going to be this side over here, AC. So usually we want the base at the bottom. So the length of that base, if we go ahead and count how far that is, we did that earlier, that is going to be 10 units long. So let me go ahead and change that. So that's 10 units. And what we want is the height, and the height is the distance from the highest point of our, of our uh, triangle going straight down. So it's going straight down over here. So that height in this particular case, if we counted that, that's going to be 6 units. So h is equal to 6. I keep forgetting to change that. So h is equal to 6. Okay, so now we have our base, we have our height. All you got to do is substitute everything in. So the area is our base, which is 10, times the height, which we said was 6, and all of that divided by 2. Well, 10 times 6 is 60. 60 divided by 2 is 30. So the area is going to be 30 units. And don't forget that little 2 that's squared. So the area is 30 units squared. Okay? Not too bad, that was just a triangle. So let's go ahead and try a quadrilateral here. And here I got some uh, a quadrilateral, quadrilateral being four sides, and we're pretty much going to do the same thing. Now, in order to do this, we're gonna go ahead and label these points here. Uh, so it makes it a little bit easier to see uh, what we're doing. So uh, I'm gonna just label these points A, B, C, D. So here I got quadrilateral A, B, C, D, and I wanna find out the perimeter of this quadrilateral. Now the first one that I'm going to do is AB. And AB, the reason why I'm doing that is because it's, it's really simple. It's a horizontal line going straight across, and therefore all I have to do is just count. So AB, if I count across, that's going to give me six units. Okay, so I got the first side. Our second side is going to be BC. So I'll go ahead and figure out, okay, well, what is the length of side BC? And again, you can use the Pythagorean theorem or you can use the distance formula. For me, I prefer the Pythagorean theorem. So that means with the Pythagorean theorem, I'm gonna go ahead and pull out my straight edge and I'll go ahead and draw these right triangles. Now to draw those right triangles, I'm gonna draw horizontal and vertical lines. So here's my vertical line and here's my horizontal line. That's gonna connect the two creating a right angle, and therefore I have a right triangle. 
So now all we got to do is figure out, okay, well, what are these measurements? So for, for this little side over here, that's going to be uh, one. And on the other side, this is going to be 11. So all I got to do is just plug it into our formula. So BC is going to be 1 squared plus 11 squared is equal to C squared. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Well, 1 squared is just 1. 11 squared is 121. And when well, we add those together, we get 122. And use square root. So we go ahead and square root each side. The square and the square root cancels each other out. And if we round it, C is going to be approximately 11.01. .01. Okay, so we found out the length of BC. Okay, let's go ahead and do the next one here. So this next one is side CD or DC. This side right over here. And again, I'm going to go ahead and do the Pythagorean theorem. So this is side CD. So I'm going to take my straight edge. I'll draw my triangle here, my right triangle, by drawing horizontal and vertical lines. So here's the horizontal. Here is the vertical. And we just need to count uh, the measurements for these lines that we just drew. So the distance uh, on this bottom is going to be 9 units. And going up and down, that's going to be 6 units. So all we got to do is substitute it into our formula. So 6 squared plus 9 squared is equal to C squared. 6 squared is 36. 9 squared is 81. 36 plus 81 is 117. And again, we square root both sides. That's going to cancel out our square and our square root. So in this case, C is approximately 10.82. Okay. All right, we got one more side. So I'm going to go ahead and do that last side. And that side is going to be AD. Let's change the color here. So this one is going to be this, so AD. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and pretty much, once again, do the same thing here. I'm going to go ahead and write AD right over here. Okay, so I'm going to draw my triangle, the right triangle. Draw a vertical line, draw a horizontal line. And then we could go ahead and count the units up and down. So going up and down, that's five units up. And left and right, well, that's going to be two units left and right. So that just means two squared plus five squared is equal to C squared. Okay, two squared is four, five squared is 25. So that means we have 29. And again, we square root. And that way, the square and the square root cancels out, giving us C is going to be about 5.39. Okay, so now that I have all of these, all we got to do is add up the four sides. And that's going to give us our perimeter. So if I add them up, 6 plus 11.01 .01 plus 10.82 plus 5.39, that's going to give us about 33.22 units. Don't forget your label. All right, so let's do uh, one last one and this time we're going to go ahead and calculate the area of our of our quadrilateral here. Now the area is a little bit different here so what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at how we can calculate this area. Now I want you to take a look at what we had before. Remember we want to know the area of this odd-looking quadrilateral. But if we take a look at our image from before, if you take a look at those triangles that we drew on the outside, well, if you connect all those triangles together, it looks like we have a rectangle here. So we're going, our goal is to take this rectangle, take away those right triangles, and therefore we should have the area of the figure that we want. So let's go ahead and take a look at this one here. I'm going to go ahead and draw those triangles again. And when I draw those triangles, I'm going to see, I'm going to see what our, uh, move that up a little bit 
what our rectangle looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and draw this triangle right over here on the left and on the right. So I'm going to draw these horizontal lines. I'm going to draw these vertical lines going straight down. Do the same thing on this side. And we'll draw this line right over here straight across. So our goal is to go ahead and figure out, okay, well, what is the area of this rectangle first? And once I find out the area of this rectangle here, I can go ahead and take away these triangles, these right triangles that I see going around this figure. So let's figure out, okay, what is the area of a rectangle? Well, we know that a rectangle means that it's going to be the length times the width. So if we go ahead and figure out, okay, well, what is the length and what is the width here? Well, let's take a look at these dimensions here. So we got 11 over here. We got 9 over here. Uh, we have 6 here. We got 5 here. We got 2 here. And we got 1 over here. And, well, if I want to go ahead and find the area of a rectangle, well, it's just length times width or base times height. So in this case, we got 9 times 11. 9 times 11, that's not too bad. That's just going to give us 99. So that's our rectangle. So now what we want to do is we want to take away some of these triangles here. So we're going to go ahead and take away these triangles. And I'm going to label these. I'm going to call this one A. Let me change the color here, make it a little bit easier to see. Let's go ahead and do this one in purple. So this is A, this is B, and this is C. So triangle A, triangle B, and triangle C. So let's start off with triangle A. I want to figure out, okay, what is the, the area of triangle A? Well, A, remember, it's base times height divided by 2. So that means 2 times 5 divided by 2. And, well, that's just 10 divided by 2, which is just 5. Okay, so that's triangle A. Triangle B, well, the dimensions of triangle B is 1 by 11. So 1 times 11 divided by 2. So 11 divided by 2 is just 5.5. And then triangle C, that's going to be uh, 6 by 9, so 6 times 9 divided by 2. And that should, well, 6 times 9 is 54, 54 divided by 2 is 27. And then, well, we just need to go ahead and calculate the area. So the area is basically this big rectangle that we just found, which is 99. And then we're going to subtract each of these triangles. So I'm going to take away triangle A, I'm going to take away triangle B, and take away triangle C. So I'm going to subtract 5, subtract 5.5, and subtract 27. And if we did the math here, well, all of this will give us our area. And the area ends up being 61.5 units squared. So try to draw that rectangle and then take away those right triangles uh, after that, that surrounds your figure uh, like what we did here. All right, I hope this helped out in terms of finding the area and the perimeter of a polygon on a corded plane. And if you like it, give me a like, uh, leave a comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next one. Have a good one.